Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bob Mom Podcast. We have the most amazing guest on today, Harvey Wizard. Harvey, welcome to the show. Hola from Costa Rica. Por uh, vida to all. I wish I was in Costa Rica. Come on down. <laughs> I bet it's beautiful there. So, it is. Harvey Wizard. Now, is that your real name? Well, it sounds made up, doesn't it? It sounds made up. <laughs> yeah, that's because it is. But <laughs> but the Harvey part is real. Yeah, my mother named me Harvey because she didn't want to beat me herself. And she figured she'd name me Harvey and let the kids in the playground beat me for her. That works. <laughs> and they did. And we we have so many people that listen that, obviously, their parents this is a Bob Mom podcast. We have so many people, moms, dads, everyone that listens to this. And they themselves aren't taking any kind of risk, let alone calculated risk with their lives. They're not leaving Absolutely. their comfort zone. It's Absolutely. like, it's like so sad. Um, but yet they're like telling their kids, go apply to that college, do big things, become a doctor, you know, like be better at your sport. Come on, hustle on the court, do the thing. And yet they're not doing it. Right. So I'm, I'm, I was really hoping to today as we talk and that you can help encourage these parents to like, do the fucking thing and and get on it. Change your life so you can help change your kids' lives. Well, even like I said, um, you know, in terms of raising my daughter, right? Um, even there was all about you know calculated risk. Yeah, there you have for to sure. take a lot of calculated risks. A lot. And um, and and it's funny when we talk about calculated risks. You know, talk about we. You know, we've already mentioned it that. Um, that my daughter died at 28, yes. uh, two years ago, fundamentally by taking a bad calculated risk. She did. It's a crazy story, you guys. We were talking about it before we hit record, um, you know, because he was giving me the warning and stuff, and I had read it on the breakdown sheet, and I just, I can't believe at 28 years old, you know, that you lose your daughter, and you found happiness again, and you you came out of that, and I went to a psychologist, but the way that he helped me was the book by Albert Ellis. And maybe I'll give you the link later and okay. uh, yeah, to, to yeah. buy this book. Albert Ellis is a famous psychologist, and he the book is called How to Be Less Disturbable, with How to Be Happy and Incredibly Less Disturbable, something like that. And fundamentally, the idea is no matter what happens to you, at any moment, you can choose to look at it however you want. So why not choose it to look at it in the way that makes you happy, mm -hmm. no matter what happens? And the truth is that when my daughter died, of course, at first, there was a shock. I mean, it was, you want to hear how bad this is? This will make anybody who is a bad, I think this is worse. Um, <laughs> my brother, who I was never particularly close to, uh -huh. took my ex-wife's side in the divorce. Oh. And so when my daughter died... My brother did not call me, and my ex-wife did not call me because we weren't on speaking terms. Is is your ex-wife her mom? Yes, exactly. And she didn't even call you. She did not call me. The way the way I found out was a Saturday morning. I get a call from my mother, who is very brash. <laughs> yeah, and, and I get a call like this. I get Harvey. Did you hear? Did you hear? I no. Said, I said, hear what? She goes, Samara's dead. <laughs> so that was how I learned about it. Harvey, um, are you serious? I am absolutely serious. When she died, as horrible as that was, she, you know, I thought one thing, which I hope everybody thinks about a little bit, because this is a pretty, you know, in terms of death. How long, if when you die, how long do you want your relatives to be miserable? Right. Seriously. I, I, right. I, I hope. Honestly, that it like, it's there, I'm recognized, I'm celebrated, and then move on, because I'm not coming back. Right. Maybe, I don't know, do I sound harsh? But like, no, I don't but, want but people that's... mourning over me and like, oh, like, I'm not coming back, right. dude. But the idea that, do you know what I'm saying? Because what yeah. I, the problem I have, when even when I tell, I'm always worried about the listener's reaction when mm -hmm. I talk about my daughter's death. Because what sure. I know is that when I talk about it, we're all upset about what happens to us and what it means to us. And when I say it to somebody, it suddenly creates the image, how would I feel if my kid died? And that's what people are feeling. And then I, so I have to comfort them, okay? But the yeah. point is realizing all these things, realizing that, oh my God, I am now disconnected from my ex-wife. Yes. Fully disconnected from my ex-wife. 
right? That's true. So between that and and understanding the fragility of life and the, and and what that did for me in terms of and especially because I do college education because I do I help kids get into college. Right. I, I but it's more than that. I mean, I when I take on a kid, I only work with 60 kids a year. I typically turn away way more than I have room to accept. And a large and you know what I'm looking for mostly? Kids who will actually do the work. Right. Bingo. I I just raised my price I, about 6 months ago. I raised my price from 4,000 to 10,000. Good for you. And the reason and the thing that I noticed and part of why I did it, do you know how many parents pay me $4,000? Based on, and I offer unlimited everything, unlimited lessons, unlimited help with your essays, unlimited projects to make you look like a superstar. I'm going, I, pers I bring in a public relations campaign. Mm -hmm. Once your kid achieves something, they show up all over the internet. I'm doing something, I'm kind of like, you know, the, um, I'm like a strange Ben and Jerry fl uh, flavor in a sea of vanilla in, in the college admissions industry, okay? Because I actually take these kids under my wing and make them as big as they're willing to go. Right. And, and in other words, it's not just a college admissions coach, you're basically now having a chance for your kid to work one on one with an internet multimillionaire, published songwriter, award winning photographer. Um, Dude, you are all the things. Author? So, Did you say author? Yeah, I am a best selling author, right? Comedian. And, and then, <laughs> right. And, I, and, I, and, I, and what I sort of explain to people is that. When when you're get when I'm helping with their essays, you're mm -hmm. getting a best selling author, published songwriter, and yeah. stand comedian, which means I get paid to write. Not to mention the fact that twenty million dollars that I made for my copywriting and affiliate marketing. So, wouldn't and the interesting thing is that so many people never call me because they think it sounds too good to be true. Because they're what a bad calculated risk they're making, aren't they? Not just getting on a free call. Yeah, with, my, with me or my mission structure. Do you know I, right. I I have this huge email list, and I put at the end, you know, basically ask me any questions, and you will, and I'll answer personally. Mm -hmm. Almost nev nobody ever asked me a question. Ugh. Do you get so, people who pay, and then they their kid like doesn't even do the work? Oh, it happens more than I would like. I mean, even to the point that there was, and and, and I get caught because a guy called me. His daughter was a B minus student. Now, I will work with anybody if they're really committed. And I said, you know, I have very bad luck with B minus students because if you're only getting B minuses in school, yeah. the likelihood of you getting a high SAT score, which is much, much harder. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like a kid's family in Little League and you bring him to the Olympics. It's like yeah. not going to happen. I had, and then I had, I had three calls, one with him, one with him and his daughter. You know, and I basically uh -huh. said, I'm really uncomfortable about this, but I don't want to deprive you as a parent of this opportunity for your kid. And that's the only reason I'm saying yes. And how did she end up doing? One lesson. <laughs> One lesson, gave her homework, never again. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Now, and, I know, and I know parents are busy, but it's just create a, a schedule for your kid. Right. Let, yeah, let's dive into this, like, because mm -hmm. this happens. So, it, and I think it's this generation of like the parents who are now raising these kids and they're either like helicopter control everything. So now mm -hmm. when they're going off to college, the kid like literally doesn't even know how to think on their own. Um, they're book smart, but like street smart, stupid, or I'm sorry. Yes. I said that right. I'm like, did I say that? Yeah. I said yeah. that right. You know, um, or they're just so not hands-on at all. And they are just like, here, you teach them, you do it, you know, and, and they really don't even know their kid. They don't know what time they go to bed. They're not helping them. They don't look. I see this all the time. And these teens are just raising themselves because parents are off and they're not even connected with their own life. You know, um, why do you think I've got to ask why you think parents pay for this and then don't follow up and like make a schedule for their kids and like, Make sure that they do this with you because they because they haven't done that with their kid and anything else. Yeah, yeah. and and this and one of the there's a couple reasons why I do what I do. When I say I only have sixty, I can only room, I've only room for sixty people mm -hmm. a year. That's what I do. Sure, yeah. Um, and that and that's part of we've we've talked about it that I am sixty three years old, and that's and that's a weird thing because I I I basically se I set out to do this not and then I didn't even realize. I, I didn't say I want to look like this. I want to, you know, change, like I want to completely look absolutely different. 
And, but it, but I just kind of followed. I was like, which is, that's something like, look for success. I'm like, hey, this is working. Uh -huh. And I'm starting to get more attention. And, you oh, know. Oh, we'll dive I, all into that. <laughs> so, so, so a lot of what I do, and again, it has to do with my daughter's death, that this is kind of my opportunity to do a lot of parenting. Sure. And sometimes to fix stuff, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, because I even had a kid come to me and his parents were crying because all he did was play Fortnite. Yeah. And you would think, oh my God, what are we gonna do with that? But I said, aha, uh -huh. we're going to make him $150 an hour Fortnite coach. And I'm going to show him how to create a website that is so over the top believable. And then we're going to create a story, taking things from his real life. And because I'm a published songwriter and comedian and, and, so, and best-selling author, I know how to do that probably uh -huh. in a way that your average you know, uh, guidance counselor or uh, English teacher doesn't. He got into an Ivy. Wow! Just off See, of that. I love that. I love how you take these situations and you just you make them incredible. Like, I mean, even with your marriage and and your daughter's situation and what you're doing with these college kids of like, clearly they need help. They want to go to top school. And they don't have their shit together to do it on their own. And you take the situation and you just like make it incredible. And like I try. Well, you're doing it because you have you have a very successful business. But you were saying you only take sixty kids a year, right? Um, and most of most of who I turn down are bad parents. I'm not turning their kid down. I'm turning the bad parent down. Really? Yeah. What does a bad parent look like? Like, a bad, do, you, a bad, do you see it on their application, I, or I tell, when you talk? I, yeah, it's, it's three minutes and I know. Okay. I mean, after a while, that's part of when I, because anybody who's seen the video and when, I made me saying I'm 63, part of why I say that is that I want credit for both. I want credit for making myself look like this is 63, but I also want people, like a parent, to say, I'm already, I've already been through this. To the very end, right? I've done, you know, elementary school, high school. And when I talk about how I chose the high school for my daughter, based on the fact we we're living upstate and in sixth grade, seventh grade, she came home from a party, parent chaperoned. Oh. They had been through five liters of vodka in the kid's bedroom and the parents oh. had never had never been smart enough to just say, are you hungry? Right. Have, you've it's, been in there for a while. <laughs> right. And I was and I was said, you know what? Risk, the biggest risk I have now is my kid getting killed by a drunk driver in a car with a drunk driver. Yeah. All this stuff that I'm not gonna be able to control. And then when we had the opportunity to go to New York City, I said, it's just safer. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, they were still doing this stuff. You know, my, my yeah. daughter trying, but it, it, so it was at least easier to control. So when, a, when I talk to a parent and just from the questions that they ask, a lot of times they're like, well, how many hours a week do you do, you do the lessons? And I say, the, 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 I said, first of all, and this is what, I've, what, I'm, what I already just started giving away. Anybody that can just look for Harvey Wizard, they'll find it. I know mm -hmm. that if they come to the page uh, for your podcast, if that's where they're listening, they'll find the link. I'm giving away my entire, the system that I, that I worked out 45 years ago, I've been teaching 40, for 45 years, that the, the John Katzman, the founder of the Princeton Review, offered me $10 million for that I turned down because it said, well, Harvey, this is the Prince Review and for parents, you know, you know, it's a major player. Yeah. And to have to have the, the founder of the Prince Review say to me, well, Harvey, I guess I could say our systems are cousins of one another. But to be honest, we at the Prince Review would be your very stupid cousin. And people are like, well, why did you turn down all those millions of dollars? I was like, well, first of all, I don't really am motivated. I made enough money that I don't need more money mm -hmm. because of how I live. And I just, I cannot go corporate. And I said, no, I want to stay in control of it. But the point is, I'm now giving this away to everybody. I created, I spent a lot of time, it's a five hour course of me personally teaching my rules, which if you follow them, it actually guarantees a perfect SAT score, but people got nervous with that. Wow. So I had to say 1530 plus, which basically means you didn't actually do everything because I have right. the vocabulary list. I have the practice regimen, which is only 30 minutes a day. But you see, part of the problem is that the merchants have gone down to where the parents are instead of pulling them up. Mm. The truth about SAT is that it's a br you have to be brain trained. It's not like every other, every other um, tutoring company says, because parents will say, so you're going to find his weaknesses and fill them because that's what they've been taught. I'm like, no, it doesn't work like yeah. that. 
I'm going to give you the rules and then your kid needs to treat these rules like his life depends on it and practice every day for probably a year. And then you'll get your 1530 plus. And if you work with me, I will give you unlimited one-on-one -on -one lessons with the big best teachers in the world. And I'm very proud of how I've, I, my staff are working mothers whose lives I've all changed. Oh, wow. I, I doubled all their salaries wow. from what they were making before. Now so these, I have, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say these five rules um, there's, there's 54 rules actually, there's okay. 54. but anyway, <laughs> okay. go ahead. Okay. Let's stick with five. <laughs> well, let's, let's, I will tell you one. So you get an idea of what I did okay, and how I yes. figured it out. And this one secret, not only this beats the reading test on the SSAT, the SAT, the ACT and the LSAT. I just spent three hours last week and I beat the LSAT. Oh my God. Did and you I took, really? <laughs> yeah. I took a kid who I got in a 1570 out of 1600 on their SAT because they contact calculated risk, right? right? And the dad said, do you have a program? And I said, I don't, but if she's willing to work with me for free, then with, given that I've never done it before, um, you know, we'll work together and I'll see if I can beat it because I probably can. Right, right. And and after three lessons, she's already gotten a high enough score to get into Harvard Law School. Oh my God. So, I, no, she was a smart kid. You know, I used the, but but yeah. the one rule, but it's as simple as this. And this is how I figured it out. This is like, you know, I'm sometimes I say I'm so out of the box, I'm almost an alien. Because imagine a 17 year old kid studying for the SAT, and I was always thinking business wise, and I'm thinking, what is the biggest vulnerability of the SAT? Somebody being able to prove a second answer right. How could they avoid that? There must be an objective pattern below the test, which if I could identify it, it's a, then the whole thing can be reverse engineered and this is how you do it. And that's what I did. And when I figured out every reading test mm -hmm. answer is a paraphrase of text on the page. You see, it's not in your head on any of these tests. It's always test on the page. For instance, the text may say, what is the reason the flower has a stronger scent? Why does the flower have a stronger scent? But the right answer for that is, what is the reason for the upper limit on the intensity of the flower's aroma? Do you see how it one, and, yeah. and that's the rule, every word of a correct answer must match something in the text you can point to that means the same thing. What they've done is only the right answer is the true paraphrase from the text. The reason I prefer the SAT is almost every question tells you which line to look at. So it's not an education, you know, it's like, let's beat the test. Right. And in terms of going at it, you know, I had done these, these charity events a number of years ago, where I would go into a school, teach all my rules for free to everybody, just because it's the right thing to do. Everything else is not as good as mine. I mean, if the Prince Review tells you we're your stupid cousin, I don't know what other kind of <laughs> affirmation I'm going to get. Right. right? And, and I would teach the whole thing. The idea was that we can raise money for your PTA. And this was when I was raising money to help kids with cancer. But I needed a place. And I was going down to South Carolina. The mom had talked to the guidance counselor and said, well, let me talk to the guy. Mm -hmm. Once I told him that the trick was you don't read the passage, you just match the words. His response, the guidance counselor's response is, oh, we can't have you here. We can't teach our children to go against normal educational protocols. Oh. I swear to God, this is what he said. Oh. And... Yes. And I said, but don't you want all your kids to have higher SAT scores? Isn't that the real thing you want to prepare your kids right. for so that they don't waste all their education and they actually get in? He's like, yeah, but we can't, we can't, we can't go against protocol. So of course I found another school, but yeah. But the point is if you just sit there and, mat and that's what I'm giving it out there, go ahead and, and I'll, I'll give an extra bonus. I'll pay $10,000 to anybody who can bring me a real college with college board question where this doesn't work. I've had that offer out for 45 years. So I'm pretty comfortable. <laughs> well, I love um, this I'd be more happy if it, if it, if it inspires people to say, go, go, to, go get the rules and make your kid practice for free. I'm just giving it away for free. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I love this way of thinking and how you're getting people to look within. Like the answer is there. Just study it, practice it, like, you know, dissect it and everything. Um, you're not like, here's, here's the answer key, you know, and you're getting like the five rules it's, how it's, to beat, you know, it's, 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 it's like, basically a video cheat code. That's how I explain it sometimes. Yeah. You, know, you want to play a, you want to play that, um, you want to play the video game, but you want to shortcut, you don't want to 
spend such a long learning curve. So you buy the cheat code that says, oh, there's something special over here. There's something special over there, see? Mm -hmm. so, and that's but what it is. You still have to put in the time. You still have to study. You still have to be dedicated and persistent with it. Like every podcast episode that I do pretty much, I always like bring it back to fitness and because, you know, that's what I do. And right. I love this because it's, it's very similar to how I teach and coach with like nutrition and food, you know, like mm -hmm. just learn how your body works, collect the data. Like your body is the answer right there. It will right. tell you that if you're eating, you know, 1500 too many calories in excess, you know, you're going to carry more fat. If right. you have, you know, excess body fat in your stomach, mm -hmm. like that tells you something. If you're not sleeping right, like you have all these answers right here, but you just got to look at it different. You got to learn it. You got to study it. And then you're going to get like amazing results. Well, well, actually, I mean, for me, what, like we, we talked a little bit about my body, you know, I have this weird, <laughs> even my, my uh, body <laughs> journey, because I'd spent so many years, I would go to the gym, but very casually, I, mm -hmm. I went to the gym the way most everybody, uh, uh, kids tend to study SAT, you know, I would go a couple times a week, 30 minutes, all the machines, right, and done. And then, and again, this um, probably, I, I like already, that comparison. I, I like that comparison of how you went to the gym, how most kids study for the SAT. Right. So, mm -hmm. but in terms of, in terms of, like I said, my body journey, you know, it was never, I never wanted to, I was never willing to put it in the effort. Then I got exiled to Bulgaria for 90 days, seven years ago. And that story is on my YouTube as well. But anyway, because <laughs> how did you get exiled? Well, I did. I was basically exiled to Bulgaria for 90 days in the winter by myself. Oh my teaching God. kids and now that means I'm teaching kids because of the time difference teaching American kids from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. nothing else to do in the Bulgarian winter I can't even read the signs because it's a Cyrillic alphabet so I'm just completely I don't know but there is a local gym 10 minutes away and uh -huh. because in Eastern Europe everything is cheaper 50 bucks unlimited gym access and unlimited personal trainer this poor personal trainer Vlad was the gym manager the gym's salesperson, <laughs> the personal trainer. And then one day I was in the locker room and he's mopping the floor. And I was like, and I, you know, you're amazing. He said, well, you know, in Bulgarian, if I complain, they'll get somebody else and they don't care. Anyway, I used that with nothing mm -hmm. else to do that those 90 days gave me a habit, which I've wow. kept for the last seven years. It's very nice to be with my 33 year old wife. Yes and not for people to think I'm the sugar daddy, even though sure. maybe I kind of am. And it's the most, to, to sit down at a restaurant and people say, hey, Chico's, which is kind of like, hey, young couple. Uh-huh. I, I mean, love it. it you yeah. know, who, who could ask for more from their gym right. investment than that? Right, exactly. <laughs> but it's true, you know, and, and that's another thing I'm constantly telling people, but I don't, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe like 1% actually hears me is that like, as you age, it doesn't mean you have to get older. You know, you don't have right. to look older, you can age beautifully, and not get older day in your life, if that makes any sense at all. Let's call a spade a spade. We're all fundamentally lazy. Oh, for sure. Right. So, but again, the key is if you do a little bit and you get a little bit of positive return yes. and then you do a little more, right? So, so the idea that, that anybody can do what I did, you go to Romania. I mean, I was there already. That's when I discovered this transplant doctor to the stars cost me $4,000 for an insanely good transplant. At least that nobody ever, when I tell people it's a transplant, they're like, and like, well, transplant means it's your real hair. It's your that's, hair. That's, yeah. You're just moving. They, they do. And even that, you know how many guys are like, I'm scared. I'm like, it, it doesn't hurt more than taking a, uh, than a, than a tooth out. They novocaine the back of your head. They pulled the, the, the out. They novocaine the front of your head. They put it in and then bam, you're done. Right. But there's that there's, you know, I've had a nose job above the eye, below the eye. The thing I just discovered because I was getting upset because I was getting sort of a natural wrinkle down here. I'm 63 years old. There's a spa right here in, in Gracia, Costa Rica, where I live where the woman does all those New York City treatments like deep infrared to build collagen. Mm -hmm. And this stuff actually is working. I, I just got, um, I, I got, a, they call it uh, limpieza profunda, which is supposed to mean deep cleaning, but I translate it as hurts like hell. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you only have to do that once every couple of months. But, you know, there are so many guys who go and buy a Porsche 
Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm like, just make yourself look, you're going to get a lot more. Right. <laughs> like I've got, you're looking at maybe 30 grand total over many years, plastic surgery. And, and here's an easy thing anybody can do. Here's another quick plug. Black beard, beard mascara. Well, my beard, beard, beard mascara. Because my beard is completely white. And it's all, everything that I do, even for the kids getting into school, it's based on impression. That's what I explain. I was like, you know. Bingo. That sometimes, they're like, I'm like, well, if you just, we're going to be completely truthful, but I, I interviewed students for Dartmouth over 10 years. I know how they're thinking. And you can always do this. You know how people are thinking and you show up looking like what they want. It's no different from somebody who's out of work but they get a job as a realtor. What are they going to do? They're Mm going to buy the best suit they can on credit card, and then they're going to lease the best car they can. So when they show up, they look successful. That's all you want for everything that you want to do. So when your kid, the thing people don't realize, the forums are filled with parents talking about, my kid got got this GPA and an SAT, and, and then they list the clubs. What I always say is if I'm not excited, I'm worried. Your kid needs to be a superstar because you're yes. only letting you're only letting in five percent, and that's part of the laziness. If you know you're sending your kid into a ninety five percent loss situation, yep, and then you're going to bellyache about it later, or or look to the internet for a bunch of crap information. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing that bothers me the most is there are so many unethical and mostly incompetent people now diving in to grab a piece of the admis- of the um, admissions coaching pie. So many parents, and, and then they say to me, but your results sound too good to be true. <laughs> and, and, and it really upsets me. I've had, I've had hour-long conversations. Do you know I just had a conversation with a parent? She told me she was going to spend a lot more than the 10000 because my competition for even the package I'm offering is charging mm-hmm. $100,000. Oh, my God. To, to, because it's unlimited. And then you don't get to work with the owner. This is, you get to work with me for $10,000 yeah. unlimited. If you come to me in ninth grade, that 10,000 covers everything from the day you sign up until the day you graduate. I get it. And I get that like, um, you, a, you get what you pay for and it's important to have that coach and stuff, but how you said it's too good to be true. Like I get that all the time. You know, and when I explain like my program, like busy to bound fit mom and what I do and how you actually work with me and my coaches and like, we're there to help you, guide you through the process, teach you, coach you exactly what you do. People are like, no way, because they're so used to the other stuff out there. Exactly, exactly. And even stuff that cost more. And they're like, well, I just spent $3,000 on this. And you're telling me you're only this much and you do more. And I'm like. And well, the interesting, this is where, <laughs> this is where I feel, you know, people, they're so rushed that they're not using their brain. Exactly. Yes. Because see, it's interesting. And for all the things that I've done, and the fact that people still think I'm too good to be true, I've got a Wikipedia page. I was written up in Entrepreneur Magazine ten years ago, and Entrepreneur Magazine basically said he sounds like it's something you'd find in the back of a used comic book. But this guy actually, <laughs> but he actually has a ninety-five percent right rate, and we vetted him, and you can believe this, right? Um, and you know, I've been, and then I've got. I've got reviews on a third party site, meaning they're checking the IP address. I mean, yeah, some bad, some fake reviews could slip in there going back seven years. And the only one bad, there's 73 reviews. The one bad review says it's a kid who is complaining that I made him practice too much. I swear to God. <laughs> and I'm like, if, if I was here scamming people, how would I have, why wouldn't there be anything right. on the whole internet yeah. that says it's bad? For sure. And, and I had a talk with the mom and, and I'm feeling bad because she, she was saying, co- you know, she was looking for a coach and she was probably going to spend 20 or 30 grand. Oh. And when she was talking to me, she said, well, it's just, I, I don't know you. And she goes, I have a, I swear she said, I have, I have a friend in Costa Rica. I'm going to call and ask if he's heard of you. <laughs> well, first of all, I only work with American kids. What, you know, if they know me here, it's because I have been on the radio as a stand-up comic. So yeah, that's not like, going to help. Yeah, help you. I'm like, I, I, I do have a problem with your, with, with your shopping method. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, and that's uh, that, you know, I, I even, you know, I've even do these, and, and this is a special gift just for your, well, and then we'll be able to see. This will be okay. able to prove that this is how your, this is how your, um, how your listeners can prove themselves good parents. 
because okay. if you don't take advantage of this, I'm not going to end that sentence, but <laughs> what's um, our free gift? <laughs> okay. The free gift is if you, you just send it again, my email will be on the list. You just go to Harvey. Oh, yeah. Just look for Harvey wizard. We'll put everything in the everything. show notes too. But even if somebody just remember Harvey wizard, Google me, you'll find everything, including my email, send me an email put bomb mom in the headline and I will give a free 15 minute one-on-one -on -one zoom with me. You'll fill out a form and I will give you the branding for your kid. Wow. You'll have to do it or you'll hire me to do it. But, and, and, and in fact, I just posted a review. I was just so proud of this. A guy called me and I didn't have any space last year. Mm -hmm. And I spent 30 minutes on the phone, branded his kid. I just got the email that he got her into Brown even without an SAT. Oh my this past gosh. Year for 30 free minutes with me. Wow. Yeah. So that's what, I'm, yeah. Because, and again, I, you know, to com it's a two thing. I want to combat the too good to be true. I want to at least, yeah. sometimes I tell parents, do you know I had a parent who we were talking about an SAT and she was like, well, she didn't want to do the one on one tutoring because her kid, because last time she signed up, the kid didn't do it wouldn't come to basically he would say I'm I'm late he wouldn't do his on his lessons in mm. his he wouldn't do the lessons in the room so she drove him to the class and I said if your kid is not going to do it what makes you think that sticking him in the class for 30 minutes and this is just right. like what you do with imagine somebody yeah. doing a personal training session where the person just watches you do it so, and as I explained to parents, the magic happens in the practice sessions that your kid does at home using what they've been taught in the lessons. Right. So it's, and, and the way that I ensure, or at least do everything I can so nobody wastes their time, you have to bring a complete test that takes five hours to complete mm -hmm. to get your next lesson. Unlimited lessons. The only limit, no more than two in a week, because sometimes people get obsessive and more than 10 hours or two tests. Because what Too I don't much. want, I, this is what I notice people doing. Nothing over the summer. They show up on Christmas break and want a lesson every day. Well, he'll do a test every day. I'm like, the brain doesn't work like that. Just like the body doesn't work like that. I no, always say, sir. you can't, if you want to lose 150 pounds, you don't show up a week before your wedding. I think you're going to get it and off. People will still try to. Exactly. So that it, it so it, because people are like, what's the secret? You did all these things. Discipline, persistence. Yes. Get a coach. And it helps to have no way out. I've, mm. I because like that. it's it's too easy to give up if you have if you give yourself a way out. Oh, absolutely! Oh, I love it, Harvey. Oh my God, I feel like we could talk forever. We might have to do like a part two and part three. Oh well, thank you so much for coming on the it's show today. An absolute pleasure. Uh, we are going to put everything in the show notes and the links. But I love that your name is so easily Googleable. That's not even a word, but I'm going to make it a word. Uh That's fine for me. <laughs> Um, but we'll Harvey put everything Wizard, in the show notes. Right. Yeah. And all the links and everything. Um, and I can't thank you enough for coming on. We'll put this on my YouTube channel as well. We'll put it on yours and um, let's stay in touch. You know, like maybe we'll Absolutely. do this again and we'll make a video. To. I'll come on your YouTube video, your well, channel. Actually, we'll I'm, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm starting my own podcast. Sweet. Uh, so in the next couple of months, I'll send you an invite. Reach we'll out. We can hook up again. Reach out. We can keep this conversation going. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Thanks again. Thanks. And everyone stay safe, stay healthy until next time.